Welcome back, we'll do one more exercise here. So this is also a previous exercise that I've given in this class before. Uh, it explores something called ranked voting. So uh, in some voting systems, you can, if you've got multiple candidates, for example, Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Deb, uh, you can go ahead and rank them. Uh, your first choice, you would rank them number one. If there are four choices, you'd rank your first choice as one, your second choice as two, three, and then your last choice, you, if there are n of them, you would rank that as, uh, as your last choice. Uh, and uh, one method of counting up the votes in this case is the board account method, uh, where each candidate is awarded a point uh, based on their ranking. So if you were ranked, uh, if, if one, one voter ranked you at the very top, then you would be, receive uh, N points. In this case, if there are four of them, you'd receive four points. If you were at the very bottom, then of course you would re your ranking is four, it, your points are inverted, you get one point. Uh, and th this kind of voting uh, tends to lead to a consensus candidate uh, because uh, there might be one faction that uh, really likes this one candidate over here and one faction over here that really likes this candidate over here. Uh, but then uh, th they do agree uh, on this the, their second choice. And so the se second choice would tend to uh, rise above those other two extreme choices. Uh, so it, it, it's a way of getting a consensus candidate. Uh, and uh, we're going to do, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write a program to count up the votes and determine who, who wins. Uh, so here's an example input. We're going to process a CSV file, a comma-separated value file. Uh, on the first line are the candidates' names so that you know who they are and how many there are. Uh, out, say, as an example, Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Deb. Uh, and then each line after that is going to be a vote. Uh, for example, this first voter here, they ranked Bob as number one. They then ranked Alice as number two. Uh, they ranked Deb as three. And then their last choice was Charlie. Uh, but if you look at the very last line here, uh, they also ranked Bob very highly, uh, but Alice was their third choice instead. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five voters here, and that's the number of ballots that we're going to want that in our output. Uh, but we're going to want to go through and assign a uh, number of points for each candidate uh, for each vote. Uh, so again, this is going to be uh, processing a comma-separated value file. We're going to want to take these strings and convert them to integers, uh, and, uh, and we're going to want to compute all these points. In this case, the winner is Bob because he has 15 points. So to actually have something to work with here, I'm just going to use that test case that we were given. I'm going to create a folder called data, and that's where I'm going to put my input output files. And I will create a new file, a CSV file. Now it wants to open this up in Excel, but I don't want to open it up there. It's just a plain old CSV file, so I'll open it up with the editor here. Uh, and that's my input file. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is, of course, open up that file for input. So I'm going to need a scanner. And remember, it's all relative to the project, so it's going to be in the data folder, and the file name is input.csv. I've opened it up for scanning, and I'm going to want to treat that first line differently because that gives me my candidates. Now, that first line is going to have this string right here. So how do I split that string apart? We have a utility in the string library called split. And I want to split it along commas. So it's going to chop it up, get rid of the commas, and give me those four candidates' names there. And it does so by returning a, an array. So this will create a, an array uh, with those four candidates' names in there. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to then go through every other line uh, in the, the file and I want to associate them each with, uh, you know, Alice, Bob, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and for each one of those, I want to give them a point, right? So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an integer n here so that I don't always have to talk about 
the length of that array, and I can use n instead. And then while I have another line, I'll get it, split it out so that I get those numbers. And now what I need to do is I need to go through each number that's associated with a candidate in this, uh, this array, uh, convert that vote to a number, uh, and then take the inversion, you know, n minus that number, and that's the number of points that I should add to that candidate. I'll parse the ith vote as an integer, and then the number of points that I give them is equal to n minus that, plus one, right? Now think about this. If I give Bob one, n is four, so n minus one, my vote, is only gonna give me three. So I correct for that by adding in one. Likewise, if I, uh, if I uh, vote for Charlie here as only four, four minus four gives him zero points. Now proportionally, it's all gonna be the same, but to get the same output, I'm gonna have to correct for that, and the lowest valued one gets at least one point for that vote. So that's the number of points that the candidates get. Now that that particular candidate gets, uh, the ith candidate gets, how do I keep track of all those points? Well, I could create another array. of size n, which means that I should put it down here instead. And then I will put that into the totals. Total sub i plus equals points. And then I can report those all down here at the bottom after closing my scanner. And this will end up printing out that Alice got 10, Bob got 15, Charlie got 11, and Deb got 14, which matches the output from before, except that we didn't have them in order. So I'll leave it as an exercise to you to go, with that, go ahead and go through here and resort these. Um, you'll probably want to redesign it or two because if you want to resort these in descending order according to votes, in other words, you want Bob at the top, uh, then you want Deb, then you want Charlie, then you want Alice, uh, you're going to have to sort two different arrays uh, ac according to data in one of the arrays. And so this is kind of like breaking encapsulation, that we've got two pieces of data that are associated with each other. Maybe we want to bring those together somehow.